We are finally back with another episode of Flippin' Friday. Sorry for the delay, but this episode might not be as easy as all of our previous ones. During this season two of Flippin' Friday, we've already racked up a healthy amount of profit, almost to the point where we're playing with house money after just three episodes. But those three builds were during the last few months of the year, which is the holiday season when everyone's buying. We're now here in February slash March timeframe, which is where things definitely slow down a bit. But just like all of the episodes for season two of Flippin' Friday, I'm I'm gonna live stream this entire build process. So let's jump over to that and start building this thing. And real quickly, since I know my audience is always interested in saving money when building and selling gaming PCs, today's video sponsor, GVG Mall, can definitely help you out with that. I've worked with GVG Mall for so long now and have bought probably close to 100 keys myself. And they're hooking you all up big time with the 25% off discount if you use code ZTT18 with the link in the description. GVG Mall has Windows activation keys as well as Microsoft Office, game keys for platforms like Steam and Origin, and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards. Activating Windows couldn't be easier, just paste in the key that you get instantly after paying on the website, so remove that ugly unactivated watermark for good. Don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off with the link in the description. Alright, so starting off with the CPU, you guys already know, but we're of course going with the Ryzen 5 3600. I honestly want to switch things up for entertainment value in these videos, but for budget builds and especially budget flips, it's just hard to use anything else. This 6 core and 12 threaded AM M4 chip is just too good a value for $66 from AliExpress. For the motherboard, we're going with the ASRock B450M ACR 2.0, and this board I actually snatched from a Newegg combo deal, which was pretty crazy. Now, to be honest, this deal included this motherboard and two different RAM kits for $95 total, so I had to build my own pricing for this video. We are using one of those kits it came with, which is this YOLO black kit that's clocked at 3200 megahertz though, and because of this weird pricing here, I thought it was fair to consider the the motherboard at $55 and both the RAM kits at $20, which would mean my MOBO and RAM kit for today's build cost me $75. Hopefully you guys think that's fair, but either way, that is the advantage of buying parts in bulk sometimes. I purchased five of these bundles, by the way. This is also the reason why you should be following the ZTT Deals channel and the ZTT Discord server. Shout out to Chef Deals for the discovery on this one. Moving on, we have the SSD. And for today's build, I just went with simply the cheapest one terabyte NVMe drive that I could find. And at this time, it was the Team Group MP P33 one terabyte for $58. We don't need Gen 4 with an AM4 CPU. And to polish off this motherboard prep, we have the CPU cooler, and here's a Thermaltake UX200 SE ARGB that was on sale over on Amazon for just 16 bucks. During this PC building live stream, I did include my thoughts about flipping with this cooler though. I don't recommend this if you have to ship it. The latching system on this cooler cannot survive a bumpy transit. We had a couple of these break whenever we were selling these online, but since this is a local flip, I'm comfortable using it because it's still a good CPU cooler. So with that being said, that does polish off our motherboard prep. So let's move on to the power supply, which is none other than the Apivia Prestige 600 watt. Lately, I've been going with the MSI Mag A550 BM for these budget builds, but the Prestige was actually a bit cheaper at this time of purchasing. Remember that despite the not so trusted brand, this specific model is still rated tier C on the PSU tier list, it's 80 plus gold certified, and it's perfectly fine in my opinion for these less than $500 PCs. We're also plugging in some all black Asia Horse cable extensions because they'll look so much better than the stock cables, but I know some of you will argue with me on this one. For PC flipping, using black extensions is indeed slightly questionable, but you guys know my model on the aesthetics, I shouldn't have to repeat it. Aesthetics? Or everything. Once the power supply was ready, it was time to start putting these pieces together inside our case. And we're using the DIY PC ARGB Q3, which I believe is my second time using this case now. I actually really like this model for PC flipping specifically because for $60, you're getting a ton of value here. First, you're getting three pre-installed ARGB fans, which are great for aesthetics and quicker building. It's dual chamber, so we can easily stuff all the cables in the back without spending hours on cable management. And finally, it's rocking the meta fish tank look, which is what everyone's after right now. And once everything was placed inside the case, the last component is of course our GPU. And today we're going slightly off meta here with the Zotac GTX 1660 Super, but this is still a pretty solid option for PC flipping. I only paid 90 bucks for it, which is definitely below the average price, which is good, but I also already bought this about a month ago for a previous video, so I just gotta use it. We'll test this GPU soon here in the upcoming benchmarking section, but rest assured, it can still play any game in 1080p, and it's also Nvidia, which we know is what our pre-built gaming PC customers really want. Now, one important thing to note is that unfortunately, you can't actually daisy chain the RGB fans with our CPU cooler, which is a huge 
bummer. On the live stream, I ended up using one of these one to five ARGB splitters to daisy chain them together. And then I also used a SATA button controller so I could show the live stream viewers how all of the different colors looked. If you're following this along at home, you don't need to purchase any of these additional items though. And I won't be selling my build with them either, but you will have to connect them up a little bit differently. You'll first want the three RGB fans from the case to connect to the reset button of the case, which is how it's meant to be connected. And then you'll have the RGB CPU cooler fan connected directly to the motherboard. This means that if you want all four fans to sync up, you'll be pressing the reset switch and also using the motherboard's RGB software. But at the end of the day, it's just not that big of a deal. All in all, here's what my final parts list is looking like. And my total cost for the project was $437. That's honestly still pretty good considering how good this thing looks for a fish tanky RGB style of build. Again, which is the meta for PC flipping right now. But let's talk about the actual performance of the build now before we get it listed. Starting with 3D Mark's Time Spy, we get a score of 5,956. Honestly, that's not terrible because when you factor in the build price of $437, that means our multiplier is about 13. If you recall this calculation from my recent video, ideally we're shooting for around a 15, but with the budget aesthetics, this is still pretty solid. Here's all the games that we tested and just like you'd expect with a 3600 and a GTX 1660 Super, we played every single game in a wide range of settings using 1080p. For the eSport level of titles like Fortnite and Counter-Strike, we got that higher FPS rate, which is what we're looking for. And then for our tougher to run games like Cyberpunk, we had to put the settings down too low, but we still got above 60 FPS. But that's about where the good news ends for this project because man, I did not see this coming, but this was actually my first ever failed flip. I originally posted this up on Facebook Marketplace in February, and I'll admit, I set the price a little high at $600. I originally thought that $550 would be a great price for it, but a lot of people in the Twitch chat convinced me while I was building this PC to reach for $600, so that's what I did. Breaking news, I know, but yeah, the Twitch chat isn't always exactly reliable. After about two weeks of little to zero interest, I just lowered the price of that same posting down to $550 and figured this would be the sweet spot of where it would sell. But here's where things got very weird because I didn't get a single message for multiple weeks about this. Let me explain to you how weird this is. As a content creator, I get all sorts of messages whenever I post on a platform, even on a local Facebook marketplace. I always get messages that just say something along the lines of, is this actually the real Zach from ZT? or even at least a bunch of BS trade requests for like an Apple Watch or a PS5. Again, I didn't get a single message. Things were definitely looking sus, so I thought the best thing to do was completely remove the posting from Facebook and then re-upload it as a new one. Since we were already about a month into this project, I just listed it at $500 this time, which is a really good price for this caliber of a build, and I figured that that would sell instantly, but still, I didn't get a single message. Well, scratch that. I did actually get a Series S Xbox, Elite controller, four terabyte hard drive, and a guitar offer, but other than that, absolutely zero messages. Over the course of the next month, I tried using different pictures, showcasing different colors of the RGB at the front, switched up the description, all of the things that you should typically do if a build isn't selling. At this point, I know it's kind of cocky for me to say this. I fully understand that, but I firmly believe, well, actually, I'm not firmly believing anything. But, Jazz hands! But, I do believe that there's something screwy going on with either the Facebook algorithm or maybe my account or maybe just my recent two listings or something. Cause like I said, no matter what I post, I feel like I could post a thousand dollar PC and list it for like $10,000 and people are still gonna send me messages about it. It was so weird because I just didn't get any single messages about this. And for $500, this is a really good build. So I don't exactly know what happened here. Now I do understand I'm trying to sell a build with a GTX 1660 Super and that's probably not helping my case. The GPU launched in 2019 and today it's still a good option for 1080p, but there are several better options. The calendar month of February, March is also really bad for selling big products because most people are still recovering from the holiday spending. And then they're also waiting for their tax returns to come back in late March to early April. I don't want to make it seem like I'm not at fault here at all, because at the end of the day, I could have done better things in this build. It's a good build, but it's not a great build and it's not a great flip. I understand that. Comment down below if you think you know what went on here. Either way, the project was just going on for way too long as we're now like two months invested in this thing. So I had to make a decision. I either had to just completely scrap all of this project or I had to figure out a way how to end this YouTube video. Sure enough, per usual, the ZTT community came in clutch because I decided to post it up on our website as a rare mid-month drop on zttbuilds.com slash drops. I put it up for sale and then I made the announcement on Discord and guess how long it took to sell at $500 
$200. Two minutes. Two. Now, I do understand that our community will sometimes overpay for things just to get them from ZTT. At the end of the day, I paid $437 for this solid budget 1080p PC, and the buyer only had to pay a $62 build fee, which we know is pretty good for a pre-built. Somehow, I still managed to end out on top with some extra profit for this pre-built. The buyer got a pretty decent deal, but I still failed my original project of local flipping for Flippin' Friday Season 2. I'm not going to add this profit total to our running list of profit for Flippin' Friday Season too, because that's all supposed to be local builds. I think the best thing to do for this project is to just forget it ever happened, wipe the slate clean, and then just go back to the drawing board, figure out what happened, move on, and then get the next build. Again, feel free to let me know what you think happened down in the comment section. I'd love any and all feedback you have for me. But yeah, sometimes it just is what it is and you can't win them all, I guess. And just in case you missed a previous episode of Flippin' Friday Season 2, be sure to click the playlist that's on the screen now.